it started out great. I was all excited. And by the end of the day, I was livid. <laughs> People always told me I need someone like you. Someone who gets me and someone who's cool, yeah. And I like the way you are. And now I want it all. All right, in a minute here, we're going to go back in time to yesterday when I made the mistake of deciding to come out here and uh, work on the RV. I found this thing behind the fridge spitting out tons of water. I couldn't get the, uh, the plumbing system to pressurize in there. I fell down these steps over here and did this to my arm. I thought I broke my arm at first, but anyways, all right, let's cut back to yesterday and then we'll pick up here. All right, so what we are doing today, guys, Marion's in the kitchen. She's not really in good morning mode right now. What the heck? I thought I saw a ghost behind me. <laughs> Anyways, what we're doing today is starting to get the RV prepared to go back on the road. I need to cut some of these branches and stuff down. Look, this is what we see all day, every day. I don't know if you can see the squirrels running around in that tree there. There's birds all over the place. Anyways, so yeah, I got the RV opened up here. I actually opened it up um, a couple weeks ago and nothing would work in here. Everything was dead. The engine was dead. The generator was dead. All the lights in here were dead. The batteries were dead. There are three batteries under here. One runs the engine and two runs everything else in here. I had to buy a battery charger from Amazon and I charged up two of the three batteries, but not before buying a brand new battery to get it started in here. The third battery wouldn't charge, so I had to buy a whole new battery for that. So I do have an extra battery in the garage right now for the engine if I should need it. But they are all charged up now. Um, I came out here this morning, started the engine, ran it for a little bit, got the generator going. It's running right now. I opened up all the windows so we can air the place out. As you can see, everything's just kind of thrown around in here. Um, <laughs> look at this wallpaper starting to peel. I've got this fan on as well as the one in the bathroom here so that it can kind of pull the air through here. I need to clean that fan. Oh my gosh, there's just so much work that needs to be done in here right now. I don't know what the heck we got on this carpet, man. I put this carpet in brand new. Guys probably remember if you've been watching for a while. <laughs> I put this carpet in brand new, but I mean, when you're living in an RV and you're tramping through, you know, mud and dirt and sand and everything, you're bound to get it all over the place. So we'll clean that up the best that we can, but we have a lot of stuff to do in here as well. You can see we have some pink in the drains here in the shower because that is all from winterizing this stuff. Man, all this stuff needs cleaned up so bad. I need to start flushing out the whole plumbing system and de-winterizing it. So I have the book open here to that page. Let's check the fridge here, see if it's getting cold. Yes, thank God, man. This is like the fourth fridge we've had in here. Yep, it's all getting cold, thank God. This table is loose from the wall. Like, as you can see, I have it attached in here with a post and then I had it screwed into the wall over here but these walls are so flimsy that the screws have pulled out so I need to figure out how I'm going to secure that <sighs> there's just a lot of work to do in here guys to get prepared there's my trusty 100,000 subscribers plaque right there I've considered taking that in the house a million times but when I'm on the road filming, I like to see it right there in front of me. It's funny sitting down in here right now, just kind of kicking back for a minute. Um, because as much as I love having our house, our love nest there, um, I do miss being out on the road. I, I loved being full-time in the RV. Uh, so did Marion. And I really do miss it. Um... We're probably never gonna be full-time again, but we are definitely still gonna travel a lot, especially around this time of year, because starting July 29th is when we get out on the road and start doing all the Halloween stuff. So we'll be back home a few times in between that time, um, between, uh, you know, July 29th and October 31st. Um, 
hopefully we're going to be home more this October because I really want to be home for for uh, for Halloween this year. I want to do some decorating. I want to go to some pumpkin patches and you know when I'm out on the road and I'm just filming Spirit Halloween stores every single day all day, I miss out on all that. So I want to try to get that done earlier this year and get back home. I'm gonna save the Ohio stores for when we get back home so I can just make little day trips and still be here to enjoy the Halloween season. But for today, this is it. Gonna be doing a lot of work in here to get prepared. Man, the uh, even this um, tiling up here, the fake tiling, I can see where that's starting to pull away from the wall. Probably because everything got so cold in here and like probably contracted or whatever it does when it gets cold I don't know <laughs> and everything just starts falling apart the biggest difference in preparing this to get on the road right now is that we're not preparing it to live in it so there's a lot of stuff we can actually take out of here I mean like the closets back here that have all our clothes and stuff we can take all that stuff out just put the bare minimum in here just what we're gonna need for a few months on the road yeah look at this all these clothes are still in here um, you know all this stuff's gonna come out and I'm simply gonna stock up on things that I really do need I gotta put something over that <laughs> man owning an RV is a lot of work guys there's also a lot of stuff I need to do out here like I need to go through each of these compartments and get out all the junk that we do not need to take with us it all adds weight and weight means less mileage less gas mileage when I let down the jacks it'll be interesting to see if these tires have lost any air which might mean that I need to go get them serviced. Oh my gosh, we need to wash this thing. Look how dirty it is. And when it rains, at least before we got out of the RV, we did have a small leak coming from somewhere up here above the windshield. Now these are our new windshields. We had them put in when we were in Las Vegas, but they must not have sealed it completely because there's just a small trickle. If you guys remember that one video we made, when there was like, I don't know, tornadoes in the area or something, and we were in a Cracker Barrel parking lot, and the water was just coming down into the RV, trickling down from the top of the driver's side there in the window. So that's definitely something else I need to tend to. What the heck is that? Oh, just more dirt and mud. Anyways, lots of work to do with this thing right now. So we're gonna get to it, and I'll show you guys how it looks as it comes along. So, it is hours later. <laughs> Marion was out here for quite a while today. Now, I've been out here for probably an hour and a half, moving the mess from one side to the other. We got all this stuff down here now piled up. Marion went through and cleaned up a bunch of stuff up here. She used the Swiffer in here. She went through and emptied these for the most part except for a couple things we're gonna leave in there. I'm about to start over here. I've been working back in the bedroom here. As you can hear, I got the air going here, but I took everything off the bed here. We've got everything out of there, out of the closets, out of the drawers, everything out from under the bed. We're just kind of going through, well, everything. <laughs> Pulling everything out and then putting back only what we're gonna need. Just really trying to minimize in here. So we don't have just a bunch of clutter that we have to trip over and whatever. And that's how it is right now. So <laughs> yeah, I can almost say I'm back to hating RVs again already. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, clean out the water system now, the plumbing. Um, the first thing I did was fall out of the RV. I opened the door, stepped down, and I rolled for some reason. Messed up my arm there. I thought I broke my arm for a minute. It's okay, but now I'm working on this water system here. And I turn it on, we have water running here. All that foamy stuff, no, oh, it's working its way out now. But all the foamy stuff is the, uh, the antifreeze that I put in there to winterize the system so the pipes wouldn't break. The pump is properly turning on and off. It's filling up the, um, the water heater. I can feel the water getting hot in there. We barely have any water pressure back here, but it does take a little bit of time to pressurize the system. So there's that. The shower, same thing. We have a little bit of water coming through. 
but it takes a little while to pressurize the whole system. Toilet flush is fine, so that's doing good. I've got all the valves closed that I need to have closed, but there's a part out here where there's water dripping, and I don't know why. Right over here, I have no idea why that water is dripping from there. I looked under there and I couldn't see anything just yet. Um, I don't know where it's coming from. Coming from behind there, I just, I don't know, man. <sighs> this is what I hate about having an RV. This is when it really becomes a pain. You know, I mean, when everything's working out, it's great and it's fun, but when it's not working out, then I'm just, I'm over fixing crap. I'm over pouring money into this thing. <laughs> I don't know if it could be like a crack in the holding tank there or something, the freshwater holding tank. I'm gonna have to pull all this stuff out of here and try to locate where that water is coming from under there. Um, the thing is, if it were coming from like a pipe or any of the plumbing, this little motor right here, the pump, would be running non-stop, and it's not. So, I mean, that's a good sign, but then again, I mean, if that water holding tank there is cracked, this thing's sitting right here, and I'm taking the Hummer wherever I go. Okay, so next day we are starting fresh, um, and this comes back to the point where I did the intro for the video, because at this point... The water system in here, the plumbing system, is not pressurized. I need to work on that today. I need to work on getting this thing fixed right here. The last thing I said before we quit yesterday was that I thought there was a crack in, like, the holding tank down here. That's not what it is. It turned out to be this right here, which is actually a water line that went to the original fridge for an ice maker or, you know, one of those things in the door where you put your cup up there and it fills you up with water. So this thing, I went digging around under all the cupboards. I found this thing spewing out water. Because if you take a close look here, you can see where that plastic there has split. It must have frozen in the winter and then split, so water has been shooting out there. It soaked everything behind the fridge, and it soaked down through the floor and was dripping out over here. I got online last night, and I ordered two pieces from uh, Home Depot that I'm gonna run out and get right now, and then we're gonna get back to work in here. Okay, so I got that little cap on the ice maker thing, and that's working perfectly fine. It's not leaking anymore. What I'm dealing with right now is I have no water flow inside the RV. Now remember, I'm going from having winterized it last year, um, putting fluid in so that nothing would freeze to draining out all that fluid. I got the freshwater hose running around here, connected over there to the RV, to the right inlet. I got it connected to my other hose right here, which is, you know, spraying out a little bit of water, but that's not enough to lose pressure. It goes around, there are no kinks. It is hooked up to the house, to the spigot, and it is turned on, and I have almost zero water flow. I do have a pressure regulator hooked up over there, but that's supposed to keep it between 40 and 50 PSI. Um, we use those all the time and we never have this issue. Now this worked for a little bit yesterday, enough to at least drain out all the pink. I think I was showing you guys how there was like air bubbles in the line and everything, but today I just cannot seem to get any water flow through these things. So right now hooked up to the, uh, the city, let me make sure I have pump is off. If you're hooked up to the city, the pump has to be off. So let's see if we have any water flow from the kitchen. That's cold right there. You can see it's a very, very little trickle. Turn it on to hot. The hot comes out pretty decent, but still not as much as it should. Come back here to this sink here. Turn on the hot. We have a little bit cold, a little bit. It should be much more than that. The shower, that's all we have right there. It's just dripping out, basically. That's on hot, put it on cold, basically the same thing. Flush the toilet, and the toilet is really the only thing that seems to get enough water pressure going to it. The other thing that doesn't seem to have any trouble is the spigot that's outside, the outside shower. If I turn that on, the water's shooting out. 
why <laughs> why is it shooting out there and the toilet's working fine and I can get barely any water flow to anything else? If it's a matter of air in the lines, you should see it like spurting and spitting. Um, and then that should solve itself after, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. But that's just not happening. Same thing with the shower. It should be spurting, it should be spitting water out, it should be spitting air out, and it should correct itself and give us a flow of water, and it's just not doing that. I have checked every water inlet and outlet, every tube, everywhere that you turn something to let it flow through. I, I have no clue, I'm lost. That thin little line you see right there, that's where all the water was spurting out yesterday. That's the ice maker line. And as you can see, there's no water dripping off that or anything, everything is dry back there today. So the cap that I put on did fix that problem. The good news is most everything is working correctly right now. This is the second day that I sparked up the engine right away, um, sparked up the generator right away. It ran all day yesterday, probably for eight hours at least. It's been running for about another two hours today so far. No problems with the generator. So the work that I did on it last year must have solved that problem. <laughs> the fridge works, the air works, everything else seems to work. The hot water heater works because the hot, the water that's coming out on the hot water side is hot water. So the issue is the water flow right now. So I've got to get that figured out. I'm gonna shut up for a little bit, dig in and see what I can figure out. And I pray to God that when I come back to you guys, I'll be able to say, I got it figured out. We got water flow, everything's good to go. Okay, well, thank God that is done. We have water pressure all throughout the coach using the pump. There's the cold, the hot. This little lady came in and helped me fix the shower. <laughs> what I did was I drained everything completely, filled up the fresh water tank, then I turned everything on, turned on the pump, let it just run for a little while. You can see we have a decent stream of hot water there, decent stream of cold water, and then in the shower, we have an actual shower, if you can see that, hot, cold, and the toilet works. So. When Marion came in here, I had the toilet working, I had the outside shower working, um, I had the kitchen sink still open, this opened up in here, and this was getting stronger over here at this sink, um, but I could not figure out the shower, it was just basically dripping. And she said, is there some kind of a clog in there? So I took that out, we didn't find a clog, but when I put it back on, it worked perfectly fine. So I don't know what the issue with that was, but, we got it going now. The last thing I had trouble figuring out was the cold water in the kitchen sink here. All I had was just a little trickle. So I figured that it was this little water filter down here. Now, when you winterize, you take that out and then you can't see it, it's too dark, but right up in here is where it goes. There's like a little diverter cap that you put in there. I had taken it out and put that filter in I didn't know if that was an old filter or a new one. It's got to be an old one, though, because I ordered new ones yesterday and uh, stuck that in there just to have something in there. But when I took that out and put the diverter back in, voila, we have cold water. So as soon as the new filters come in, filter cartridges, whatever you call it, I'll stick one of those in there and everything should be good to go. Now I need to hook up again to the hose and make sure the water's gonna continue coming through. <laughs> People always told me I need some 